Hey, welcome to this Moby Flight release review video. My name is Sebastian. I'm the creator of Moby Flight. And Moby Flight is your easy, cheap, and flexible way to create your own home cockpit for your favorite flight simulator, whether that is FSX, P3D, or X-Plane. Today, I want to walk you through some changes and uh, fixes that I was able to make and released during the last couple of weeks. And those are called release notes. And um, actually, if we go to the website and I take you there just right now, we go to the download section, you will find release notes for every version that I release of Moby Flight here in that, on that particular page. And if you scroll down a little bit, you will have this list for every version that I release. There's going to be release notes that tell you what has changed what has improved or what is just a new feature or what has been a bug fix. Today I want to talk about 753, 760 and 761. 7, 753, let's, let's start with that one. So this one here just has bug fixes, but this bug fix was a huge one. And I'm so, so happy that I was finally able to get that fixed. So a lot of People, a lot of users on the community reported that they had problems with the FSU IPC events or hold on with the events that come from button or encoders from flip switches from switches that they did not make it all the way through to the flight simulator and I had spent a lot of effort and I thought in the past couple of times that I finally had kind of fixed that problem but it turned out that there was always somebody who still had it who still had issues and I really had kind of narrowed it down to to the FSU IPC interface and there was something strange about it and then I discovered that the FSU IPC library that I was using in the past had actually received an update too. So they had published a new version. And when I, when I upgraded MobiFlight Connector to use that version, all of a sudden, all those event problems were gone. And that was so cool. And I'm really, really happy. And the community already came back and said, yeah, it's working for them now. So no more lost events. In the past, you had to do kind of try some workarounds. For some, it would be, for example, improve if they turned on debug mode. For others, it didn't and whatnot. So there's no need for workarounds as long uh, as far as we can tell uh, right now. And I'm really happy about that. The second bug fix is a really kind of insignificant one, uh, so to speak, but you might have experienced it if you turn on logging in the uh, dialog, in the settings dialog, and if you had selected a warning as debug level, which probably nobody really did, um, then MobiFlight would crash. Um, I took care of that. That was a tiny one. And another one here that is probably not very important for a lot of users is um, that you can now properly use uh, float as FSU IPC offset type uh, when using input values. So if you have an input config that tries to set an FSU IPC offset of type float, in the past it was not working, but now it should. Let, let me know if that's the case because I personally don't have any of those offsets, but I know that some of the add-on airplanes, uh, they might use it. Okay, that was 753. Uh, let's let's jump over to 760 and 761. The reason that they're together is that I basically released 760 on one day and the day after, after some of the users reported a problem on the, on the forum, I fixed it and I released immediately the next version. So this version, um, now 761, that's the most recent one, and both of them, they would have a new firmware. So I point that out, I really put that up here in a separate box to make you aware that there's going to be a new firmware. If you start MobiFlight, when you start MobiFlight and you have a board connected that doesn't have the latest firmware, it always will tell you, only if you say ignore, I mean, there is an ignore feature, but don't use that. It will always tell you that there's a new firmware available and it will ask you if you want to update always update. I can only tell you always update. That is true for firmware and that is also true for the MobiFlight connector. The second hint is that the LCD display placeholders 
have been moved from the original display panel now to the FSUI PC tab. And the cool thing is that they're now generally available in all those expression form fields. And I will show that real quick, but it's really, it's, uh, it, it, off, it opens kind of, um, it provides us new opportunities and new options. And I will create definitely a video tutorial for that. But for now, for, for anyone who has uh, used LCD displays in the past, and might have a configuration that looked like this, where you have separate different placeholders. So those placeholders used to be here. They can now be found on the FSUI PC tab. Don't worry, all your settings will be still there. They won't get lost. They will be just migrated to this, to this section here. And then now, from now on, you can also use those placeholders that are active and that you assign in the transform field. And you can also use it not only in transform field, you can also use it here in the comparison area. So that's pretty cool. And you can do some fun stuff with it and uh, make some complex configurations a little bit easier. And uh, we will definitely create a video tutorial on that. Um, oh yeah, 213. This was one uh, thing that also got requested on the forum. Actually here, Steven, he, he asked and he said, wouldn't it, be a, wouldn't it be possible to have the preset list when you um, use a preset and the next time that you open the config wizard, um, wouldn't it be kind of possible to have the preset uh, pre-selected from the list so that you know what the offset uh, was about? And yeah, I mean, it is possible now. Uh, it actually works really cool. So here in this case, for example, it says use preset radio. I know this is for my transponder. Um, I can go here, click the right one. So now it changed to 0354 as an offset value. If I say OK, the next time that I go back, it's going to tell me here which preset I used. If I make a manual change and there is, a, uh, there is an offset that actually fits all these settings on the, on the drop down list, the next time that you're going that you open it, it's going to be pre-selected. So it's pretty smart. Yeah, it tries to find uh, the right the right pre preset that fits all these settings that you provide. That's a cool. I find that's a cool improvement. That's really really nice. It it makes it so much easier to uh, remember uh, what the offset was about, even that the config might have a meaningful name. And it also works on the input tab when you go here. And then there, and you choose, uh, you choose event ID. Yeah, it's not only available for FSU IPC offset, it's also working for the event IDs. So in this case, it kind of checks for the event ID and then selects transponder 1000 or increments. Super useful, super cool. Alrighty, um, that was that. Incru increase the numbers of placeholder. Also on the forum, people were asking, can we increase it from the form of four to a higher number? Like, can we have six placeholders? And now you might have actually seen it when I pulled this one up. Here you can have up to six um, placeholders that you then also can use on your display. Especially if you have a display that comes with four lines and 20 characters, that might be really super helpful. And then the last three bug fixes here. Um, the one I already mentioned, that was this tiny problem after releasing 7.6.0 that I fixed, and then I released 7.6.1. And then we have a small issue here also that probably nobody ever noticed because nobody ever told me. Um, you can turn on log uh, logging, and uh, when you push a button, when you create such a button event, or when you um, twist an encoder, and uh, the encoder sends an event to MobiFlight, um, and then in the log in the logging entry, it will say button press for both. Yeah, button pressed when you have a button configured, also when you have an encoder configured. And I mean, I just fixed that. That's not super exciting, but it's oh, actually, hold on, I got that wrong. Yeah, I was talking about two one six. Sorry for the confusion. So that with the log log messages is two one six. And 195 is actually a bigger thing that I was also super happy about that we finally uh, fixed this. So I made some uh, memory optimizations for the firmware and uh, people had reported that when their device names get become too long, um, then the uh, communication between the board and MobiFlight connector would, would uh, become kind of unreliable. 
and um, yeah, they had to shorten the device name so that it would uh, work again. And that really was the indicator for me that it might be a memory issue. And then I kind of reworked the firmware a little bit here and there. And now it's more efficient. And hopefully all these things are now history and uh, you don't have to worry because I personally really like that you are able to provide long, meaningful device names and you don't have to kind of revert back to uh, very short, cryptic ones. Okay, so I hope that you liked this uh, release video release review video better said and um, let me know uh, post some comments subscribe like it and um, also go to the forum whenever you find something that you believe is a good idea that would be nice to have post that on the forum if you have a question if you have uh, trouble kind of getting it to work with Moby flight in your in your home cockpit go to the forum ask your questions there there's such a great community i'm really proud of of that community there's so so much engagement uh, by all those individuals and it's really really cool to have such a great helping community that support each other with questions and uh, whenever somebody, for example, has a problem. So with this being said, um, I finished for today. I'll see you soon. Happy, land happy landings and have fun with your home cockpit and Moby flight, of course. Bye bye.